estrogen. Estrogen increases uh, cell proliferation in the body. It gets your uterus ready to become um, the home of the newly fertilized egg and sperm. But that doesn't always happen. So what's going on is that your body is releasing follicle stimulating hormone to tell your ovaries what to do. And here's the key. Estrogen and progesterone have to be at a certain level. Your uterus has to be ready to accept that egg. So what I just shared with you is very significant. Then at the same time as estrogen goes up, your brain secretes another hormone called luteinizing hormone that tells everything to shut off. Enough of the physiology. The problem that's going on in our society today is this. We have too much estrogen. Not only in females, but in men. We are exposed to estrogen in conventional meat products. I am not a vegetarian. I'm not telling anybody to be a vegetarian. If you want to be a vegetarian, that's your own choice. But if you're going to eat meat, which we eat meat, we eat organic meat products. Actually, everything I put in my body right now is as organic as it can possibly be. And I would encourage you with your own budget, you want to budget your life and you can get as much pure food in your body. Because you're exposed. Hey, airplanes are going on top of us. You're breathing that in. You're going to be drinking water sometimes and you don't have a choice if you go out to eat dinner. Do you know that 40%, 47% of your meals that you're consuming are outside of the home? 47%. Over 250 meals a year are consumed outside the home. And in certain parts of the geography of the United States, to give you an example, the Cheesecake Factory, where we live. People don't even go to the Cheesecake Factory anymore. They text them or they call them up on the phone. They make their order. We have a place that's close to us, big park, kind of like your Meister Plaza here. We call it Crocker Park. And these people come into a reserved parking spot to pick up the carryout to drive away. Who do you, and I'm not saying that um, Cheesecake Factory, what kind of food that they use, because all the places where we live do the same thing. If you go out to eat dinner, you're going to be getting food in your body that you don't know the sources are from. The reason I want you to be aware of that is that estrogen is one of the main challenges. Because see, when your brain sends out hormones to tell the ovaries what to do, most people in the United States, men and women, have a term, and you might want to write this down, it's, and it's in the book, it's called estrogen dominance. What does that mean? You have more estrogen in your body, and it's not balanced by progesterone. I would tell you, and venture to say this, 95% of female hormones today is caused by what I just told you. 95%. You say, how can you say it, Dr. Bob? Because I've been doing this for 30 years. Most women that come into my office, they have two common traits. You know what those are? Tender breasts and a heavy menstrual flow. Those are both signs of estrogen dominance in the body. Men can have estrogen dominance in their body. You know what the common trait is for men? Little red bumps. Now women can add these too. Ladies, when you're done with the program today, I want you to go home and I want you to lift up your top and I want you to look at your abdomen, especially if you had more than two children. If you have little red skin tabs, they're called cherry hemangiomas. Big term. It's in the book, cherry hemangiomas. Those aren't something that you sprinkle on top of ice cream, by the way, either. They're skin tabs caused by extra estrogen in the body. Now, if a man has them, and so if anybody's watching me anywhere in the world, if you have cherry heat angiomas on your abdomen, stop eating conventional meat, and a part of your challenge is you need to clean up an organ in your body. Now, this happens to be a oil filter. The oil filter in the human body is right here. It's called the liver. If your liver is not functioning optimally, What's going to happen is your estrogen level is going to elevate and in a man, if you have too much estrogen, you can have prostate challenges, a swollen prostate. So it's not uncommon for me to have a male from 40 years old to 55 to 60 years old that come into the office with chronic dribbling after they get done urinating, cherry hemangiomas on their body, and other challenges in the fact that they might have an issue that they can't get an erection because they have an imbalance. They have too much estrogen in regards to testosterone in the body. This is very, very serious. So, 
what I want you to understand for me now is that estrogen and progesterone are two very, very important hormones in the human body. So let's talk about estrogen specifically, because I think this is also very significant for you. Estrogen, from my own research and just clinical experience talking to people, estrogen and progesterone could literally be made by any cell inside the body. But primarily they're going to come from either the ovaries or the adrenal glands. Primarily. And here's the challenge that we see. We have so many outside chemicals coming into our body and our bodies are not able to handle breaking them down. Estrogen. We don't have enough progesterone in the body to counterbalance the estrogen. And here's why. So we don't have enough progesterone to counterbalance the estrogen. Do you understand what I just said? Do you see what I about? Why don't we have enough uh, progesterone to counterbalance the body? It's going to really flip you out. Ready? I'm sure that most of you took a shower today, or yesterday, or you will tomorrow. <laughs> Dr. Bob, what does a shower have to do with me not having enough progesterone? It's going to be some shocking news to you. But when you take a shower, the chlorine that's coming out of that shower is toxic and counterproductive to your thyroid and iodine in your body. I'll say that again. Taking a shower, and you say, Dr. Bob, does that mean I take, don't take the shower? No, you get a shower dechlorinator. You take the chlorine out of your body, out of your, that's going on to your body. Because let's just say that the iodine is, is like a mineral, it's a spark plug. When you are breathing that chlorine into your body, it's toxic to iodine. That's really, really important, ladies, because ladies have cysts on their breasts and cysts on their ovaries tend not to have enough iodine. But are you ready for this? The thyroid gland needs iodide. Iodide. Breasts need iodine. Ovaries need iodine. Testicles need iodine. So we use a product in our practice that has a combination of iodide and iodine. But what I want you to know is your ovaries need iodine. Your ovaries need iodine to make progesterone. And I believe a big challenge we have in our society today is two or three things. First, we're exposed to too much chlorine, bromine, and fluorine. And I'll tell you where those come from in a minute. So we have too much of those. Our livers are not capable of processing the estrogen. That's also very significant. And we eat too many estrogen-based food items and we put lotions and fingernail polish and we breathe exhaust, all are toxic to our body and our livers are so plugged up because we eat too much sugar and if you drink cow's milk, now I'm not telling you not to drink cow's milk, but I'm telling you not to drink conventional cow's milk. You want, if you're going to drink dairy, it should be organic because they put so many chemicals in cow feed today and on their ears that these cows grow big and fat because they're putting too many steroids in them and then when you eat the steroids from the cow you have young girls that are eight years old that are having menstrual cycles and they're having breast development and they're having this um, ferocious sexual appetite that nobody ever dealt with before because of all the chemicals that they're putting inside of their body. So it takes us back to not enough progesterone, too much estrogen. I briefly mentioned a gland in your body called the adrenal glands. Because I know that there are some ladies that are here today that are over 50 years old and they might have menopausal issues and they don't have enough estrogen or progesterone. The adrenal gland is your backup support gland. Your adrenal gland is affected by stress, and sugar. Now I can't eliminate your stress, but I can encourage you to stop eating sugar. Now if you crave sugar, if you have a passion for sugar, you need to consume more minerals, very, very critical, but you might want to write this down. We also encourage something called chromium. Chromium. Chromium is a mineral that helps lower the desire for sugar.